Now what you did previously was basically just to set some preferences to allow Envy to understand where it would like to go to look for your input and output data and then also just have a look at a number of different Landsat bands 1 through 5 and 7. So hopefully you've had a bit of a chance to have a look at the different bands and understand a little bit about what you're seeing in the different bands and then also how to go at animating those to scroll through the individual bands and again look at those differences. What we're going to do now is to have a look at how we can enhance the contrast in some of our images. So for example if you're looking at this at the scroll image what Envy does automatically when it opens an image is to try and have a look at all the all the available colors that are there and this in this case we're just looking at grayscale imagery and to try and represent them as best as possible so you don't have a lot of features looking way too bright or or a lot looking way too dark but we can alter the way this looks and what we're going to do this time is just have a look at band 4 so again we'll just click on band 4 and then load band or alternatively you can just double click on band 4 and that will also um, send it out to your display group. And what you see in band 4, this is our near infrared band what you see here is that a lot of the features in the water are really dark that's because water absorbs near infrared light whereas the features on the land are really quite bright if we were to go and have a look, say, over the Darwin area here, now if we look in the downtown area, there's a lot of really bright white pixels, but it's difficult to tell what's individually in within the area in that urban region there because I guess the colours are what you might call saturated. So if we were interested in purely looking at features within the urban area, we might be interested in changing the way these features are contrasted. So what we're going to do here is just go up to Enhance and work with Interactive Stretching to start with. Now this is something that might take a little bit to get your head around so it's a really good tool to play with. Now first of all what we have a look at with this with this window that opens here is on the left hand side we've got what's called the input histogram and the right hand side is the output histogram. Okay now this is showing the way the data exists in the input and the way they're displayed in the output. So if you have a look first of all on the x-axis for both of these you'll see that the, the values go from 0 to 255. This means that it's an 8-bit data set which we'll talk more about in class. Now being a histogram, this means that it's displaying the number of pixels that have those individual pixel values. So what you can see on the input histogram to start with is that there's a fairly large number of pixels with a low pixel value, okay, and that's probably representing our water areas. Um, and then we have a smaller number of pixels, though definitely a noticeable amount here, that have a pixel value of, if I click on the graph, I can see somewhere around, say, 61, 62 or so. There's quite a lot of pixels there. But as a whole, what we're looking at within the, the whole histogram here is that we've got values that occur within, say, about from about 11 through to 87 or so. Okay. So it's actually a relatively small range of this potential use of 0 to 255 that, we, that we're actually looking at. Now if we were to go up to default and go default zoom linear, what you'll see here is a couple of things. First of all, what's going to change is what you see in these histograms here. But you'll also see the contrast in your image change. Okay, and this is basically saying that it's having a look at the statistics at the moment within the image of uh, within the image window of your display group, and having a look at the way the the pixel values are, and you can see that change. Now, when we applied that stretch, you could, you should be, you should have been able to see that a change occurred in your image as well. So some areas such as the water for example are now completely black 
whereas before you could see some distinction in deep and shallow areas. So what we're going to do is, if we have a look first of all at the histogram source, it's looking at the zoom window here. So it's showing you the statistics based on what you see in this little zoom window. We'll change that first of all to look at the scroll. And that shows us the full statistics of the entire image here. Now what we want to do here is to enhance those pixels that are creating the majority of the image. And to do this what we're going to do is use these little black and white vertical lines and move them on the input histogram. And as you do that you will see that, that, that it changes on the output histogram as well. If I hit apply you'll see that the image changes pretty close to how it was when we first opened it. Okay, now let's have a look at what that actually means. So, first of all we've got this, this single dotted line on the left hand side here and another vertical dotted line on the right hand side of the histogram. Now what it's showing us with the input histogram by putting these vertical lines here it's saying for all histogram values between the nominated lines, which I've set um, the minimum is at 9 and the maximum is at 88, what I want to do is actually stretch all those values to lie between the range of 0 to 255. And if we come and have a look at our output histogram, that's the way it looks. The form of this histogram is very similar, but it looks like someone's grabbed one end of it and just stretched it all the way out. Okay, and so how that affects things is that it will then change how our image is displayed. So for example, I could change this to say, well, maybe I only want to look at this second mode of pixel values here. You see the histogram change on the right hand side again, and if I hit apply, what you now see is that any value below this first vertical line, which is about 42, will be displayed as black. And any value above 91 will be displayed as white. So we've got a lot more black water here, really defining where the coastline is, than what we did when it was back here. So we had a definition in terms of where the deep and shallow water areas are. And I could do the same if I was interested in looking at water. I'll move it down to these dark pixels here and click apply. Everything above that value of 23 here is now bright white and saturated, but I can see a little bit more detail in these water areas. So it's a good idea to have a look at a couple of different spectral bands here and play with this tool to really understand what's happening when we look at our image. It's something that might take you a couple of goes to really understand what's happening with your histogram, but do continue to play with it to make sure that it's in your head what's going on there. When you're happy with your stretch and you feel it comfortable that you know the way things work and you've played with some of the other options, um, you can just kill that window there. And at any stage, if you think you've messed it all up, you can just come back and reload the image and it will be and it will default to the way it was initially.